Hello, I'm Annette Young and welcome to the 51% of the show about women reshaping our world. Coming up in the show, failing to add up, busting the myth that women are bad at maths. Also, making sure nobody, especially women in Africa, get left behind in the digital revolution. And a mother's cry for help. The parents of Latin American children who went missing on their way to the US join hands in Mexico. But first, are boys really that much better at maths than girls? For decades now, scientists have been trying to understand why men and women perform differently. But what they've discovered is that the widespread stereotype that men outperform women in maths is actually what alters women's performances, as Julia Seeger reports. But where are the women? At Polytechnique and Ivy League Science and Engineering School in France, girls are clearly outnumbered. Uh, v de, uh, zero. This is a second-year class of applied mathematics, and if you look closer, there are only nine girls compared to 90 boys in the room. Students enter this school after having gone to high school and a prep school, so it goes way back. From what I've seen, girls have the same chance of success as boys, but once they get to grad school, there are just fewer of them. Are boys better than girls at math? Whichever side you lean towards, the widespread assumption is that there is indeed a difference in mathematical achievement that needs explaining. Is it rooted in social factors? Well, some girls say it is. Sometimes family members tell my parents, why isn't she going to a business school? It would be easier. I think the stereotype is that boys are more inclined to do hard-edged stuff like math than girls, and that's why there are fewer girls in scientific schools. Gender stereotypes so deeply rooted, they're now thought to have an impact on how the brain functions. To learn more about this, we traveled to the city of Lyon, southeastern France. For over a year now, scientists in this institute have been studying the brain activity of girls and boys while they solve math problems in an MRI scanner. They're given eight seconds to solve this relatively complex calculation, and it's almost a tie between girls here in red and boys in blue. The outcome changes, however, after this piece of information is given to the girl. How are you feeling, Noemi? In the next test, there's a difference between how women and men perform. The conclusion of the research is simple. Beliefs feed straight back into performance. If women are reminded or believe the stereotype that they're not as good at math as men, they will indeed perform worse. It ends up being a self-fulfilling prophecy. This belief triggers negative emotions in the brain as seen here in yellow, emotions that will create math anxiety. It's a region of the brain that's specialized in treating emotions, and in particular inhibitions. So girls try not to feel this emotional message, but it's hard for them not to. And in turn, girls do perform worse. Under the pressure of this stereotype, women function at about 65 percent. Meanwhile, men are performing 10 digits above them. In social environments, where women believe they're not as good as men, they do worse than they actually should. The only way to fight the negative effects of this stereotype is, well, to fight the stereotype itself, both at home and at school. And a historic moment in Saudi Arabia. For the first time, women can not only vote but stand as candidates in municipal elections. Some 900 women out of about 7,000 candidates stood for seats on 284 councils in the December 12 election. But in a country where women are not permitted to meet men outside of their families, campaigning for votes did become a logistical nightmare, as you're about to hear. I think there are limitations in being able to meet with the public, so I decided to go to malls so that I can meet with the community. And this is what prompted me to focus on social media in my electoral campaign, where everyone can communicate so I can get the largest number of voters. And Time magazine has named German Chancellor Angela Merkel as its Person of the Year. The magazine cited her role in Europe's crises over migration and the Greek debt. 
The 61-year-old politician is only the fourth woman since 1927 to be named as an individual winner outright and the first in 29 years. Now, on this program, we've talked a lot about the need to improve access to education for girls in the developing world. But as the digital revolution begins to be felt in places such as Africa, what about digital literacy among women? Now, with me today is Julia Owano, the head of the Africa desk at Internet Without Borders. She's recently worked on a global report on the need to empower women in the developing world via the web. Julie, thanks for being with us. Thank now, on the 51%, we've reported a lot about how women are, in fact, being left behind in the digital revolution, especially in the field of IT and coding. But nowhere is this more apparent, is it, than in the developing world, where women are just struggling to gain access to a computer? Absolutely. And one thing we have to stress on is that internet and the digital world has really become a mirror of social and economic inequalities that we observe in the real and material world. Uh, for instance, in terms of employment, a country like Cameroon, for instance, where we have focused our efforts, uh, women represent only 63% of the workforce compared to men who represent nearly 77%. Uh, men are more educated. For instance, uh, women are more, uh, only 74% of women are uh, lit literate compared to 80, nearly 88% of men. So there is, these inequalities have translated in the digital world, as our study has, has proved. For instance, uh, women are less likely than men to be internet users. That means that they have they, they do not have the access to internet, and there are several reasons for that. I want to talk about that a little bit later, but first of all, I mean the take-up rate of mobile technology in Africa is extraordinary. So, what can it offer women? Well, one thing is sure is that all the tremendous hopes that we placed in the mobile in Africa have not necessarily translated into successes in terms of mobile internet for women. Uh, our study shows that this, despite the fact that as many men and women have a mobile device, nearly 97% uh, uh, in most of the cases uh, have a mobile uh, phone, this does not mean that they use it to access the internet. So the issue is probably that they do not. They cannot afford going online because buying uh, a credit for uh, online activities is quite expensive and can represent up to eighty percent of the daily uh, wage in in certain developing countries, especially in Africa. So it's a it's a choice to make, and most of the people cannot make that choice. Now you focused in your report on Cameroon, which is actually your home country. Yes. Tell me a little bit more about what else you found as a result of the study. Yes, we found that. Well, as I was saying, women are less internet users than men. Uh, the main reason for that is the digital literacy issue, which uh, we talked about earlier, which is di directly linked to the employment issue and the education issue. Because when you work, you are more likely to meet people who use uh, internet and you, who know what internet can bring you. And this is really what digital literacy is about. It's not only being, being able to turn on or turn off the internet. It's also being able to envision all the possibilities you have with such a tool. So uh, uh, by not by being less likely to be employed or by being less likely to be educated, women are less likely to use and know how to use the internet. And the second main issue is that they cannot afford it. And this is directly linked once again to education and employment. So what needs to be done? What can be done is bringing a more affordable internet access to women because we see that when they do have access to internet they are very creative for instance i'm thinking of this hairdresser in cameroon who advertises her services uh, to her clients giving her whatsapp number this uh, this has a double advantage of proximity with the client and also it's less expensive than a, uh, a website than creating a website so there are uh, possible solution actionable and very concrete solution that the states and internet service providers and civil society organizations such as mine can uh, well help achieve Julie we're going to have to leave it there thank you so much thank you to Mexico now, where a group of mothers looking for their missing children are trying to raise awareness about the dangers of migration. The caravan of Central American mothers includes women from El Salvador, Honduras, Guatemala and Nicaragua. 
their children went missing in Mexico while trying to migrate to the United States. Clement Bonoro has more. Desperate, but not hopeless. These women are looking for their missing sons and daughters who disappeared while trying to migrate to the US. The caravan of Central American mothers is in Mexico City to raise awareness about the dangers of migration. I came here with a lot of faith. I came to pray to the Virgin of Guadalupe, to ask her to bring back my son. Since I left my country, I've always had faith in my heart that one day I could see him again, hug him and touch him. With Mexico in the throes of a brutal drug war, an increasing number of Central American migrants are being kidnapped for ransom. According to recent estimates, around 20,000 migrants are abducted in the country every year, while six out of ten migrant women are subjected to sexual abuse. Mothers of kidnapped migrants say they feel abandoned by society. There are a lot of people in this city, but no one seems to care. There were just a few that stopped to look at the photos of our sons and daughters. But they don't care because they haven't gone through the pain that we, as mothers, are going through. The caravan of Central American mothers departed from the Mexico-Guatemala border on November 30th. It will pass through seven Mexican states before concluding its trip on December 19th. And that's it for now. And if you'd like to comment on what you've just seen, you can head to our Facebook page. That's France 24, full stop 51%, or do send us a tweet at underscore 51%. Thanks for your feedback so far. And please keep those comments coming in. Until our next program, bye for now.